Robert Frost's poem, Hyla Brook, it is June, and the speaker observes that Hyla Brook has run out of song and speed. Soon after, it has gone groping underground, and the Hyla frogs, which had shouted just a month before, have disappeared. But now, leaves have blown into the stream bed, and the hot summer sun has dried the leaves, leaving a faded paper sheet of dead leaves stuck together by the heat. The speaker concludes that a brook like this no longer exists, except in the minds of those who remember long. The speaker doesn't seem to mind that the waters have gone underground. After all, we love the things we love for what they are. Hyla Brook appeared in Mountain Interval in 1916. This poem, a modified sonnet, is about a brook named for the frogs that breed there. The speaker describes elements of the brook that are lodged in his memory. In Hyla Brook, a dry stream bed reminds the speaker of the song and speed of the brook in an earlier time when it still flowed. This song of Hyla Creek pays homage to memory in which the things we care about are enshrined. We love the things we love for what they are. Hyla Brook is a deeply personal poem. Although readers of poetry are generally encouraged not to assume that the speaker of the poem and the poet are the same, the unidentified speaker in the poem's opening line calls his subject Our Brook, as indeed it was. The actual brook is on the property of the Robert Frost Farm in Derry, New Hampshire. The poem opens with the speaker acknowledging that the brook has run out of song, yet the uninterrupted flow of iambic pentameter invites the reader to hear the flow of the water. Still, in the real world, not much is left of the brookness of the little stream. It's a dry creek bed lined with leaves, a faded paper sheet. Along with the dead leaves, the image points to the brook having been fixed not only in memory, but on paper as a poem.